It's World Heart Day today and it's a privilege to be joined by Jeff who is a long-standing patient suffering from cardiovascular diseases and uh, I'd like to ask you uh, Jeff you know maybe you could bring us back at the time you were diagnosed and, and how did that happen? Yeah absolutely I mean it was purely from a, a, a work medical when I was initially diagnosed um, I, as it happens, I'd actually rush to this medical because I was late and uh, my motorbike broke down and I pushed the motorbike, so I was already in quite a state before I got there. But I went in and straight away they took my blood pressure and it was just through the roof. The, the nurse almost she, she told me to sit back and relax and take it easy, but she was concerned at that time that I was in such a state. To me, it was normal. It's just my, the way I always felt and uh, it wasn't, wasn't really a problem, but that was the start. That was where she said I had to go along to, uh, to see my doctor and get myself sorted and that was the, the start of the journey. That was the, the beginning of uh, realising what was happening to me. So you were diagnosed with uh, hypertension at that time, but I think you also had type 2 diabetes, right? Yeah, that's right. It was, uh, that was the first thing. It, they told me, you're diabetic, you, you'll have to start diabetic medication and that to me didn't really mean much. So that, I was away and then the blood pressure pills came along. Um, they were having to be adjusted all the time, it gradually increased the levels of, of um, blood pressure pills. Um, and it was just, I was, I was going along, I was on the way basically, I was just going along with it, I was doing everything I was told, I was taking all my medication as far as they were concerned, and, uh, but not always doing what I should be doing. And I knew that, I knew I wasn't doing the right thing, but nothing changed, I was still feeling the same way, so why should I? Right. Doing, doing anything differently. Right. And what, was there anything else besides type 2 diabetes, hypertension? Yeah, it, it was the, the, the hypertension, I had high cholesterol, um, virtually everything that you could think of that was <laughs> basically wrong with me at that time. And, um, but it didn't, I didn't understand what was, you know, what was the thing that I should worry about the most because I had all these things supposedly that were wrong with me. So that's obviously a lot to go through all these diagnoses. So, so how did it work with the doctors, the, the healthcare system in helping you? Well, initially it wasn't very good. Uh, I mean, I, I went along to the doctor and they told me what I needed to do and I went away and that was it. My relationship with the doctor at that time probably wasn't as good as it should have been. We just carried on for the next sort of 10 years really, but then it all fell apart. Ten years later, my, my foot collapsed. And it was the, the boys actually seeing this thing, this thing happen, this shark oak foot. They suddenly realised that something was, was going wrong with me. And um, <laughs> I wasn't the man I used to be, so they told me. I got a phone call saying, Dad, look, we, we want to help you. You've got problems. We, we can do something about it. Right. And, uh, and that, that's how we started. Yeah. So, so when you refer to the boys, it's your two my sons? My two sons, right? yeah. Two sons yeah. Anthony and Ian, they, they, well, basically saved my life. I mean, if you'd seen me at the time, I was, I was over 20 stone. I, was, um, I couldn't do anything really. I mean, just walking was, was an effort. And um, literally a couch potato, I'd, I'd, that's all I'd do. I'd come home from work at night, sit down, eat my very beige meals. And, um, and that was my life. And they obviously saw, saw this. It, it, I think... It was the depression that they saw more than anything. I think they could see that it was, I was going inward. I know I was now, I know exactly how I was feeling. I didn't at the time, I didn't feel depressed. I didn't feel that it was, that was doing that to me, but it was. I, was. I was literally just cowering up, rolling into a ball and giving up basically. And, and it was, I think it was that that they saw and that's where the whole thing started. Right. So what did your, your sons do? What, what was the plan? They found a very good one, quite local to me and um, went along and met this new doctor and he's amazing, he's, he's a total change of outlook. Every item of my illness he looked at individually and gave me a plan, gave me a, a way to look at it and a way ahead and that was the beginning of me understanding what I needed to do. I needed to take some responsibility from this and with the help, which I never would have done it without, with the, the boys helping me, I. I just started turning around. They took me out cycling, they got me on a bike, which is something I could never ever do. I'd never been on a bike in my life. But I think it was that. It was a place you had to just push yourself past that little bit, you know, that little bit of fear that you have. Yeah. And it was just amazing the difference it made and how quickly yeah. the differences, you know, appeared. And how much better I was feeling 
very, very quickly. So, so where did you get the, the strength and the discipline? Because it, it's not easy to, no, to change it was, your No, brain, it wasn't, right? because that was the big thing. I mean, it mainly, mainly adjusting my diet was, was one of the biggest things, and that, <laughs> I would never have done it without the boys. They, they literally monitored everything. But it was that, it was that involvement, it was that making sure that I was doing something and giving me this goal, the, 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 the cycle ride, and um, you know, doing a 100-mile cycle ride. Hundred miles. Yeah, it was it was a Prudential Ride London, and it it was um unbelievable goal. It was something I was never ever going to achieve. It, and, and they, they mentioned it. I said, not a way. And we were talking about under a year mm. that I was going to be doing this ride. And did you do the, the yeah? One in the end, you I, did it together. I went with out, the yeah, the boys went with me. Well, uh, Ian was filming it, and Anthony was cycling alongside me. And yeah, I, I, I went even on the day. I went out there with a the view that probably never going to finish this, but. We did it. We did a whole hundred miles. It's all the Surrey Hills, massive ride, but it was unbelievable. The feeling crossing that line was just unbelievable. I just, I just realised that this is something that you can do. You, anybody with, with the help, don't give in to what, you, what, you, what you've been told. Yes, my heart was probably not in a good place at the time, but it was good enough to get me through that bike ride. And now I can, do, I, I can do 30 miles three times a week without even thinking about it. It's, it's just so hard to see these people suffering when you know that there is something they can do about it. It really, really does get to me. So how did the doctors convey that if you would be following on the path you were on that maybe some, some dangerous things could happen? Yeah, it was actually explained to me that this is the road I was on. But my, my current doctor is well, he's wonderful. He literally just went through the whole lot and he explained to me that one thing will lead to another. There's no, there's no two ways about it. The, the problems I had were never ever going to get any better unless something changed. Mm. And it's understanding that it is a change. It's, it's having that sort of relationship with your doctor whereby you know you can tell him the truth. <laughs> not, not lie for the sake of keeping them happy, which is what I was doing. I was, you literally, you were trying to keep the doctor. The doctor knows what he's doing, knows what he's telling you, but you don't want to upset him. You don't want to let him think that you're doing the wrong thing. So you're also doing uh, other things to support people to cope with these problems as well? It's one of the things the boys always said to me. He said, Dad, you could be inspiration to other people. You could be an inspiration. But I was, well, that's you know, the fat git like me <laughs> who's lost a bit of weight. And, you know, nobody's going to be interested in that story. But it was amazing. We went around to so many, been all around the world now, different conferences and different talks. And the response we get afterwards, you know, people come to me and, and tell me how, how inspirational it is. And I realise now that, yes, it is only seeing other people's stories. It's only seeing that you can, as a, as a patient, you can take on a bit of responsibility with help. You can do it and you can change your life completely. Right. It's, it's doable. And do you have any examples of patients that have been helped by your story? Yeah, I mean, we've, uh, I've had so many, uh, you know, things come through on Facebook and things like that. It's people that have seen the story, seen the film, and actually thanked us for what we've done because they've literally changed, changed their lives around in a very short period of time, many people. They've literally changed their lifestyle, changed their diet, and become a much better better person by it. We've, um, we, we, we go talking at all sorts of conferences now. We were in Parliament just a few weeks ago, just talking to uh, different, you know, different groups in, in Parliament. It's, it's just amazing that people take an interest in what I've got to say. That's just, that's why it's mind blowing for me. I can't, I can't believe it. So is there one thing in the healthcare system, uh, Jeff, that you would say that needs to change? I think it probably needs to be a doctor education in how to deal with a patient, I think, is, is a big thing. It's how do you engage your patient? How do you, how do you make him want to do something that he, he probably knows he should be doing, but at the end of the day, he's going to go back and carry on his old lifestyle. And I think this is the case with most people. It's that engagement, I think, that needs to change. You need to be able to feel confident with your doctor that you are taking a bit of control of what you need to do and that he's giving you the right, the right advice. And that's, uh, that's, that's the big thing now. I've just got that so under wraps now with my doctor, he's, he's incredible. Right. I mean, at that time, I, I, I just, my, my foot, 
I was li literally having to go along to the uh, podiatrist every week to have it sorted out. The ulcers were coming back every week, every week. And that was for years. I was doing that for years. And then just very short time of this whole project starting, I didn't need to go to him anymore. And then a final question, uh, Jeff, if I can. What are your plans for the future? What, what's your outlook? I just literally, I've, I've got a bucket list of things that I'd love to do. And one of those biggest things is, is to carry on doing this, what I'm doing, talk to people and try to encourage them that this is, this, this is not, I am not the sort of person who, who could just sort of do this, could have done this by myself. Mm. It's taken a, a whole journey with several people helping me along the way. And as long as you've got that on board, you can achieve almost anything. <laughs> That's the way I feel. That's a great <laughs> message to close. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff, you for very sharing much. that. Brilliant. Very inspirational. Thank it was you. great to meet you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.